Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another episode of Deep Dive with OA. I am Omar Abedin, Project Director at the National Incubation Center Karachi and today we are honored to have a very special guest with us. Mr. Mohammed Sohail Rajput, Secretary of the Ministry of Information Technology and Telecoms. Welcome, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, it's not every day that we get to meet someone who's actually in the decision-making halls of power of the government of Pakistan. Sir, you've been, you've been with the government for uh, three decades. Can yeah. you just share a little bit of your journey with us, please? Uh, actually, I come from Hyderabad. My basic qualification is uh, medicine. I did MBBS from Lakhat Medical College. And then I decided to join civil service, so I took the CSS exam. And I joined the civil services in October 1991, so it's exactly three decades. Mashallah. So I have, during the civil service career, I have been to various parts of Pakistan. My initial service was in Punjab as assistant commissioner. Then during my service, I tried to acquire more education. So I got a couple of scholarships. So I got a master's degree from Columbia University in New York Marshall. in economic policy management on a scholarship from the World Bank. I also got a degree from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and Duke University in international development. So that was during my, uh, during my professional career. So I have uh, worked with uh, government of Sindh a lot I have remained Commissioner of Karachi Division, of Hyderabad Division. I have served as Finance Secretary of Government of SIN and Secretary to the Chief Minister of SIN. And in Federal Government, I have served as Additional Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Special Secretary, Ministry of Commerce, and now serving as Secretary of Ministry of IT and Telecom. So this in brief is my career in service. Very, very mashallah, illustrious career. Sir, um can you talk to us about some of the big initiatives of the ministry at this time that would be of interest to people who are working in the startup ecosystem in Pakistan? Yes, I think there is a strong realization on the part of the government that future lies in technology. So Prime Minister himself has given his digital, digital transformation vision, uh, which dictates the policies of the government now. So technology is going to be the, is already and in future, more pronouncedly going to be the key word for the government. We are trying to digitize the government as well. We have introduced the e-office system in almost all the ministries of the government and the digital payments, fintechs, that culture is being introduced strongly by the State Bank of Pakistan as well. So the ministry is now in the process of uh, working on policies which can promote this culture. We have recently introduced cybersecurity policy because without cybersecurity, you can't have a secure digital world. Welcome. So that policy has already been approved by the cabinet and now it's in the process of implementation. We are also working on a cloud policy. So that will dictate how the data centers will be regulated or uh, regulated is a, I think a strong word, not regulated, but facilitated in order to ensure that there is uh, economy of scales, as well as the efficient utilization of resources. Right now what happens is that each government project gets its own data center, so the cost goes very high. So if you go for cloud policy and uh, ensure that the certain benchmarks are met, G -G. then I think costs can be reduced a great deal. We are also working on a Personal Data Protection Act in order to ensure that the data of the citizens is secured and can't be misused. Something like the GDPR in, yeah, in Europe? Yeah, something on the line of the GDPR. Okay. So that uh, act is almost final now. We have a broad round of consultations with almost all these stakeholders, not only in Pakistan, but globally. Uh, several US companies, firms like Giants, Facebook, and, and Google, and uh, uh, YouTube, they have shown a lot of interest in our act. So we are getting a lot of feedback and comments from that. Wonderful. So these are certain policies. Then we are also in the process of formulating a, a data sharing framework because in government there are data like Nadra has a big data. FBR also has a big data, but they don't 
talk to each other mm. so the efficient utilization of data for better policy planning and better decision making is not there so we are working on that as well in order to make a policy for data sharing so these are the some of the key initiatives which are being taken by the government we have a national information technology board we are trying to revive that in order to make the government more digital and more paperless uh, several initiatives are being taken on that account we are in the process of uh, building systems uh, the information technology systems for hospitals for schools for e education and e health those kind of stuff is also happening so there are multiple initiatives being taken by the government uh, uh, since i deal with the telecom as well in my ministry so there is a lot of initiative to enhance the connectivity in the country we are still not very good at broadband services only the key urban centers have 4g services but if you go out of the major cities mm. you will feel problem in connecting yeah. covid 19 has pronounced the need for that a lot because the schools were closed the hospitals were closed so there was a lot of demand for online services so now we are trying to enhance the connectivity we have rolled out the spectrum uh, uh, last month so there will be better connectivity now through we have a universal service fund company which is working usf in, yes to provide the services broadband services to the areas which are unserved or underserved so we are for the current year we have allocated 18 billion rupees for that purpose so if the connectivity increases then i think the it sector will have the potential to contribute a lot in the economic growth of the country our freelancers are mashallah very active yes and they are in far off places in places like tharparkar in places like gilgit and iskardu in hafizabad so particularly females but they will get a great boost if we can provide connectivity to them so we are working on the concept of the software technology parks as well in the secondary cities so that we can provide the infrastructure to the freelancers where they can come they can enjoy the broadband services at a fast track the electricity and other utility services and they can work from there and then they can uh, sell their products so is this uh, like the sszda no the these uh, the stza sorry stza mm -hmm. is coming up stza is another great initiative of the government uh, it is in the pipelines it will provide a lot of fiscal incentives in terms of tax breaks yes as well as in terms of the foreign exchange regime flexibility hmm. so that the flow of the cash can be very very easy yeah uh, through those stzas and uh, the uh, tax breaks are there for 10 years so there will be no income tax no sales tax on services no significant tax. yeah absolutely so significant those, uh, for those the government has finalized the locations mm, one in islamabad is coming up rapidly and then th there will be several others coming up in the province they've just signed one last week in karachi yes. with the caspit with the caspit yes Uh, so that that is another uh, contribution towards the advancement of the technology then the other thing is that we are with the assistance of the korean government we are in the process of building two it parks two major it parks one at islamabad for work for which work has already started and second has just been concluded a deal which will be very close to the karachi airport uh, the korean exim bank has Uh, agreed on funding that it will be 32 billion rupees project a huge infrastructure wow. for it but it will take another maybe 3 4 years in coming up so these are the major initiatives being taken by the government in order to enhance the uh, potential of the digital advancement in the country amazing so one of the i think direct benefits of this digitization that's happening across so many different uh, sectors of the economy being driven by MOITT as the owners of that process is that pakistan's ranking on the international competitiveness index will improve Inshallah. as a direct result Inshallah. 
The other thing I think that will be very, very helpful is that we will drop down in the corruption index. Yes. Because technology makes Brings it very more, difficult. More transparency, more accountability. Exactly. Things become more uh, clearer. Opacity goes down. So yeah, technology has its advantages. It does. And, and that's why sometimes you find pushback from strange sectors in the yeah. economy because they don't want that transparency. It's... Yeah. Uh, so nay, this is brilliant. Uh, let's talk about the Ignite Technology Fund, which is one of the MITT's uh, major initiatives as driving entrepreneurship across Pakistan. Uske mein thodi si, uh, please. Ignite Technology Fund, as you are uh, well aware that it was created in order to support the innovation startups and uh, uh, facilitate the young brains of the country in order to dream big and achieve big. So that was the purpose. Uh, currently, we have five NICs in the five capitals of the country, the federal capital and the four provincial capitals. This NIC, Karachi, is one of those. Now we are in the process of expanding this idea. So very soon we are, uh, in fact, during the current financial year, we are targeting to bring up two more. Uh, these will be vertical NICs in agrotech, one at Faisalabad and one at Hyderabad. So hopefully by March, both will be in place. Amazing. We are targeting that. And then we recently with the Karachi University, we have uh, signed an MOU for establishing a center of excellence on animation and gaming. That's right. That was done early this month. Just yeah, a couple yeah, of weeks so ago. Maybe in six to eight months, that will also come up. Uh, there's a one billion rupees funding allocated for that. So, uh, you know, the animation industry is very big in the world. There's a yes, yes, demand. yes. So if we can facilitate our young brains to to uh, contribute towards that, it will uh, increase the employability in the country and give incentive to youth to work in that area. Yeah. So this is then we are also planning one for uh, PF camera in the aviation sector. OK, we are also working on that. Uh, so that will be established in probably at Noor Khan Air Base or at the Kamra for the aviation industry. So these are some of the initiatives which are in the pipeline. Amazing. One we are also planning with Aga Khan Hospital for health sector, another NIC. Uh, initial dialogue is happening with them. I hope that will also go forward and then we can have one in partnership with Aga Khan University at Karachi. Wow. So we have actually, I don't know if you're aware, uh, we are partners with the Aa Khan Foundation. So uh, NIC Peshawar is supporting the Chitral boot, boot Camp as well. Okay. So wonderful. This is great. Uh, so all in all, very exciting times for Pakistan, very exciting times for technology development and deployment in Pakistan. Yeah, I think a uh, uh, couple of days back, World Bank each year issues a Pakistan development update. So on Thursday, they issued their latest edition. And they have showed a lot of concern about the trade balance of the country hmm. because our exports have not been growing and our imports are rising very fast. So that is leading to current account deficits in the country. But one area where they have shown a lot of hope is in the export of services. Yes. And that too, not on all kind of services, but only knowledge based services. Hmm. And just to demonstrate with the numbers that uh, the Fiscal year, which ended on 30th of June, our IT exports grew 46% year on year. Like on previous year, it was only 1.4 billion US dollars. But the year which ended on 30th of June, it was 2.1 billion US dollars. So that was a growth of 46% in our IT exports. And this year, we are targeting a growth of 75%. Which on means, top of the 2.1 billion. Yeah. So that means we will be 3.7 billion Mashallah. US dollars. Mashallah. So the result of the first quarter are encouraging. And uh, I think if we uh, achieve that target and government is providing a lot of incentives for that. So they have uh, agreed uh, uh, just in the last cabinet meeting, they have agreed on giving rebates to IT companies for showing performance in exports. So we uh, cabinet allowed some budget for that. And then Pakistan Software Export Board has been given additional budget, particularly for human resource development. So short term certifications in IT, because one of the uh, constraints we are facing is that 
वी आर प्रोड्यूसिंग ट्वेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी थाउजेंड ग्रेजुएट्स पर एन Uh, out of those, only ten percent are readily employable, just two thousand, because the quality of education is not that good. So others are not uh, demanded by the industry. So what we are planning is to introduce short-term three to six months courses in order to train them to become employable for the industry, because globally demand is very high. We were talking to U.S. diaspora Pakistanis based in Silicon Valley. about 3 4 days back with president of pakistan in chair and they were saying that they need maybe 100000 it graduates yes so indeed so if we are only producing 25 to 30000 out of those of which only yes are readily employable then that becomes the major constraint because it is not a brick and mortar or capital capital intensive it's industry. all up here it's all hr human resource bilkul so if you can put in your efforts into producing quality hr and that can be done through through revising our curriculum making our academic institutions better our teachers better trained to hmm. and update their skills regularly and provide opportunities to students to uh, get more knowledge and many of them can't afford it so government shall subsidize that and provide them that opportunity we are working on that so actually there was a recent uh, corporate advisory council meeting at uh, karachi university i was invited to be part of that and i brought up exactly these concerns because um i had recently for example uh, rejoined my alma mater iba i graduated from iba in 1991 okay. and uh, i thought i you know i should go back and refresh so i joined for another masters degree which i was hoping i would be able to convert into a phd तो खैर नहीं हुआ बट इन द करिकुलम बींग टॉट फॉर सब्जेक्ट्स दैट हैव चेंज्ड ड्रामेटिकली इन द लास्ट टेन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम एज इट वॉज इन नाइनटीन एटी एट और एटी नाइन वन आई वॉज देर द करिकुलम हैज नॉट चेंज्ड द टीचिंग हैज नॉट चेंज द बुक्स आर द सेम एंड दिस फील्ड इज सो फास्ट इवॉल्विंग गेट न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी ऑलमोस्ट एवरी ईयर Oh, absolutely! So you have to update your skill sets reg- very regularly in order to be in field. So, so most of our teachers, they they have they might have done their masters or PhD about fifteen years back or ten years back. So things have changed. Things have changed. So training of teachers is also very important. So Indeed, we are introducing one program just for training of teachers so that they can update their skills. This is this is brilliant. I was also part of a Pasha roundtable. uh just last week yeah i didn't come here i we before. we missed you there actually um what is it was there i think not the not yeah, the minister uh, minister he came, I think. i think yeah he came so uh but yeah there were several very senior people there uh one of the things that was highlighted was the uh w- you know sometimes it seems like we are taking one step forward and then two steps back so for example jo uh because all the owners of the software houses were present there they were saying that uh you know we were a, previously we had a tax exemption which was automatic whatever funds came in from outside for services rendered outside were exempt but now we have to actually apply for that exemption it's not automatic anymore and so they said actually our costs have gone up because of the cost of paperwork associated with the submission of those documents and they have to be done quarterly so they were suggesting ke bhai why why would you ask us to add this when previously we were doing this so anyway this was you know these are the kind of micro things that come up sometimes where one department is pushing for a particular uh, agenda item and some somebody else is not on the same page and you know they go in a opposite direction but uh, sir any final words for the young entrepreneurs of pakistan i think uh, th- there is a great potential for them they just need to be innovative and think big to achieve big and government is there to facilitate them and if they have any problems issues uh, they are most welcome to share with ministry of it through your good self or maybe directly they can write us emails they can send us whatsapp messages and what not and we are trying to be as facilitative as possible 
Hey, just the fact that you're here today on a Saturday uh, shows your commitment to the cause. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.